Hey guys, welcome to the last part of the Earth Science Final Review Master Overview. This is going to be part 5. Make sure you go watch part 1 through 4 to get every unit's review. I will put the link to all this in the description. This is going to be an overview video, so here is also the, the specific videos. There's 32 specific videos for every topic that teaches you the charts and things like that. This is not what that video is. So if you want those types of things, check out that playlist. Again, it'll be in the description. And if you can, hit the subscribe button. mean a lot to me. And here we go. We're on Unit 8, Dynamic Crust. This is going to be the shortest part, honestly, to get these last two units out. Not that bad. So this is going to be plate tectonics. So the lithosphere, or the rock layer, is broken up into pieces called tectonic plates, which are giant pieces of rock that float on top of warmer, soft rock below. Some facts about the plates. They're about 60 miles thick. They're made of crust and the part of the mantle. And we got two main types. You got to know the continental crust is made of granite and the oceanic crust is made of basalt. Pangaea means that all the, the land masses on Earth were once connected. All right, so then we got, how do we know that the continents were connected? So Alfred Wagner was the guy who discovered this, essentially. So the landforms fit together like puzzle pieces. We also have evidence from matching fossil layers. So the plant and animal fossils matched on the borders of the continents. We also had matching mountain ranges, that one mountain range end, and it appeared to continue on another continent. We found glacial scratch marks in hot South Africa. It's kind of weird. Uh, most of the Earth's earthquakes and volcanoes are happening at the edges of these plate boundaries, especially these ones in the Pacific Ocean. That's the ring of fire. Plates move because the asthenosphere move. Convection current moves the plates, heat rises, and cold sinks. That makes these giant convection cells, and they move the plates. You definitely have to know how to read this chart. So again, I'm not going over in this video how to read the chart. If you want that, you can go into the uh, dynamic crust videos. All right, we got all of our plate boundaries. So we got convergent. This is when they're moving towards each other. Here are the types of convergent boundaries that we can have. We can have continental plate versus oceanic plate. This is going to give you a subduction zone because the more dense oceanic plate, the oceanic crust has a density of 3.0, will sink underneath the continental plate, which has a density of 2.7. It's going to melt that rock, which then comes up as volcanoes, and you're also going to get a big trench right at the point of convergence going to make your trench. You should know how to read this chart. The symbols are on the bottom, find the arrows, read the plates. Hotspots. So these are volcanic island chains from over a hotspot. A hotspot is a giant magma chamber underneath the Earth's crust. And the main example of a hotspot island is Hawaii. All right, now we got continental plate versus continental plate. They're going to hit each other. They have the same density, so they're going to form a mountain range because they're going to both go up. Then we got divergent. This is when the plates move away from each other, and they're going to make essentially a gap in between them like this. They're going to expose that. That's called a rift valley. So lava is going to come out where that is. We also call this seafloor spreading because the seafloor generally spreads apart in this area. We get a mid-ocean ridge that forms when the oceanic crust pulls apart. The youngest rock is always found closest to where the pulling apart is going to happen, right? Because that's where the new lava is coming up. And then as that cools, it makes the new part of the plate, and that moves outwards, and that's going to be older. So you have to know new in the middle and old on the sides. There is essentially magnetic minerals inside of the rock, and they create alternating patterns. That's a mirror image on the left side of the ridge and the right side of the ridge. I'm not going into specifically how this works in this video. If you want to go learn about magnetic reversals, go check out my dynamic crust specific video because this is kind of needs an explanation. But essentially, the moral of the story is you, you see this red line in the middle? The left side should be a mirror image of the right side. So imagine folding this whole piece over as a, like a book and it will match. 
Blast boundary is transform. Plates just slide past each other and they sort of like crunch past each other. The San Andreas Fault is the best transform boundary example. Faults are breaks in the rock created when the plates move and this is just going to be giving us earthquakes. All right, law of superposition. Essentially, the oldest thing is always on the bottom. Then we got displaced fossils. We found rocks that have fish in them on top of mountains. So that means that the earth was uplifted in that area. We also have subsidence, so shallow water fossils we found at really, really deep ocean floors, which means that that earth subsided or sunk. Then we got our earthquake, which is just a tremor like this. Our epicenter is the point above where the earthquake happened. Tsunamis can happen from earthquakes, so if this happens, you want to get to high ground or evacuate. We got our P waves, which can travel through solid, liquid, and gas. They're the first to arrive at the epicenter, and the S waves are slower, and they arrive second. Seismograph measures P wave, S waves, and detects them. The closer the P wave and the S wave is on the seismogram, the closer the earthquake was to that area. We need three seismograph stations to get an epicenter. Why are they helpful? It's because we used earthquake waves to study the Earth's interior and figure out that the Earth was layered. We also figured out that the outer core is liquid because S waves were not able to get through that layer. All right, last unit is going to be geologic history. It's pretty short. Half-life, you got to know how to read this chart and know the fat chart, P-H-A-T. Um, if you need to learn radioactive decay, go check out my geologic history specific video. I go over how to do it. But essentially, carbon-14 is used to date living things. That's the most common one that they're going to use. And then the last three are for older things like rocks and minerals and asteroids and space stuff. Like this. All right, if you see contact metamorphism, this is going to be for rock correlation. So how do you know like which came first? Contact metamorphism happens. That means that the layers behind it were there first. If you see faults, folding, those things all happen after rocks were already there. It's because all rocks are formed in flat layers first. Uh, unconformity. This means that a rock layer got removed from the area. So from erosion, so it got like that rock got blown away or, or washed away and then more rock was deposited on top of it. So we call an unconformity a buried erosional surface. You have to know how to read this chart. I'm not going to sit here and explain this chart to you. Again, if you want to know how to use this chart, go check out the geologic history uh, video. Yeah, it's kind of in intensive. We got fossil evidence. So we use fossils to correlate rocks or match the layers depending on their location. Index fossils, in order to have a good index fossil, we wanted to take up a huge area. So we wanted to live everywhere, but only existed for a really short time and it went extinct really quick. So it's a, like a time marker. Volcanic ash is an amazing index fossil because a volcanic eruption lasts a very short amount of time and it takes up a huge area. Whew, we did it guys. That's all five parts. That's everything overall for the whole year. So on that note, I'm glad you hung out with me for all five parts. Thank you so much for the support. Please share these videos with your friends, with your earth science teachers so we can spread the word, help as many people as we can, and good luck on your tests. And again, thank you so much for all the support on this. It's been very fun. All right, good luck studying. Bye.